are listening to part 11 of our 20-part series, Marvelous Myths, The Wise Woman Way, with Susan Reed at Time Monk Radio. Hello, Susan. Welcome back to Time Monk Radio. Thank you so much. It's such a delight to be here with you at Gemini at Time Monk Radio and with you listeners as well. Thank you for accompanying me on this journey with the magical, marvelous, and magnificent mints. You know, we all think we know what the mints are, but as we get into them, we start to see that although they're all in one family, as with any large family, they have their individual characteristics and their specialties. This month, December, we're talking about herbs that help us keep a grip because, you know, December can be very stressful. Late November and into December, it's family time. And you know what? Most people have problems with their families, with one or more members of their families. And the herb that we're focusing on this week is one that you should definitely go to that family gathering clutching. All right. And that is motherwort, Leonurus cardiaca. This is another scentless mint. In fact, you will not be able to, to smell this at all. Uh, Skullcap does have a very mild scent, which is a very good sniffer you can smell, but not motherwort. And motherwort is usually never used as a tea. We said the Skullcap, eh, although you could buy it dried, and although I've seen some results from using it, as a tea is almost always used as a tincture of the flowering top. Whereas catnip is used as a tea as well as sometimes as a tincture, but motherwort is basically always used as a tincture. My mom's comment about motherwort tea, goodness only knows why she decided to drink some motherwort tea, but she did, was that's the kind of medicine that you get well real fast so you never have to take another dose. Believe me, motherwort tea is bitter in the extreme, no amount of honey added to it is going to make you tolerate a second cup, let alone, for some people, a second sip of the motherwort. So we tincture the fresh flowering tops of the motherwort. Now here again, as when I was talking about skullcap, you're going to find a lot of motherwort tincture on the market made from dried motherwort. And interestingly enough, not only does the dried motherwort tincture not work like the fresh motherwort tincture, it doesn't taste or smell like the fresh motherwort tincture either. There must be some flavonoids in motherwort that are present in the fresh plant that are not present in the dried plant, or perhaps it's just that drying increases the amount of bitter compounds. I'm not really sure which. I haven't looked into the, the lab science on it. But as I said, motherwort tea, ooh, really bitter. Well, motherwort tincture made from dried motherwort is also just horribly bitter. The kind of taste that makes you want to spit or wash your mouth out with soaps, anything, to get that bitterness out of your mouth. Whereas the Fresh tincture of motherwort. The tincture made from the fresh flowering tops of motherwort tastes like chocolate. All right, bad chocolate. But nonetheless, it's chocolatey. It's nice. It's got, you know, it's got some mellowness. It's got some round curves to it. It's a nice tincture. The tincture made from fresh motherwort. Like catnip, motherwort is a wild plant in North America. And it will grow in a huge variety of places so long as they are mostly sunny. Now, I have a patch of motherwort growing under a cedar tree, and it's in like like 90% shade, 90% of the time, and, and motherwort is doing well there just to prove that whatever we know about plants, they can always do the opposite if they take a mind to it. But in general, where you're going to find motherwort growing is the same kind of places that you'd find catnip growing, bright 
sunny locations. But the motherwort likes a richer kind of soil. I think about the biggest motherwort plant that I ever saw. And it was in the zoo in Buffalo, New York. And I was there with a friend. And we were looking at the elephant. I love elephants. And I suddenly realized that, that there was like a fenced enclosure around the tree. There was a tree in the pen with the elephant. And there was a fenced enclosure around the tree, I guess, to keep the elephant from destroying the tree. And in this fenced enclosure around the tree, in the pen with the elephant, was a motherwort plant that was, I don't know, maybe five feet tall. If you've ever seen motherwort, I mean, motherwort can get, like, pretty big, but usually it doesn't get, like, more than three feet tall. This is, this plant was, like, well, well over four feet. As a matter of fact, my, I just, I wasn't thinking, you know, I was just like, oh, motherwort. And my friend actually had to pull me down from the fence and said, you cannot go in there, Susan. You can't even get into that. I'm like, motherwort, motherwort, motherwort. And they're like, no, 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 no. Leave it, leave it, leave it. It's in the cage with the um, elephants in matter of fact, if my friend had had some motherwort tincture, uh, she probably would have ripped the bottle out and said, here, take some of this and calm down. I often tease that motherwort is like being able to sit in your mother's lap. Having a bottle of motherwort tincture in your pocket is like having the kindest, most loving mother right there with you all the time. Motherwort has such a range of uses for every stage of a woman's life. But mostly what I think of motherwort for is that motherwort relieves anxiety. Motherwort especially relieves anxiety about something that could happen or could have happened. And as somebody said to me, well, all anxiety is about something that could happen or could have happened. I mean, if it already happened, you don't have to be anxious about it because it already happened. I said, well, okay, well, you can, you can see it that way. <laughs> right. So uh, one of the examples that uh, comes from my life of a wonderful uh, time when I used another word was when I was gone for the weekend teaching. And the pastor princess had agreed to come in and milk the goats and take care of the cats and, and everything at my home. And I left Friday afternoon, and I wasn't worried that she wasn't here. I expected she'd probably, you know, probably come in Saturday night, and I'm sorry, Friday night in time to milk the goats. But Sunday morning, I woke up with this, oh, my gosh, something's wrong at home sensation in uh, my solar plexus. And I, as soon as I could, as soon as my class was finished, I left and I drove right home. I didn't stop to do anything at all. And when I got home, sure enough, something was wrong. She had never shown up. In fact, I never heard from her again. I don't know what happened, but she didn't show up. And I had to take some motherwort before I could go out to the barn. In fact, nothing had happen. The goats were uncomfortable. They were thirsty. They were hungry. Um, it was really late in the year. The weather was fairly cold, so they were colder and hungrier than often people, when I tell this story, people say, well, there are others bursting. I'm like, no, you know, because it was the time of the year when they don't have that much milk. Uh, but for me, the motherwort just gave me that little edge that I could be on, that I could kind of haul myself up. You know, like when you're in the swimming pool in the deep end and you could just oh, get that first knee up there on the edge and get yourself out. And this, the motherwort was like that for me. It was that first knee up. And then I could come out of my oh, panic and do the work that needed to be done, which was to get some water for the goats, to give the goats some hay, to feed the goats, to milk the goats, and just to see to it that, in fact, Everything was okay. Motherwort is not a sedative. Motherwort, if you take motherwort, you're not going to fall asleep at the Thanksgiving table. You're just going to find Uncle What's-His-Name's jokes a lot funnier. And you're going to find your mother far more tolerable. And everything is just going to seem a lot better 
when Mother Wart is around. And again, one of the things that uh, we've been talking about this month, December, is that these herbs are not out-and-out out sedatives, nor are they out-and-out out psychoactives, but they do alter your mind. They do change how you think. They change how you feel. Uh, these herbs, skullcap, catnip, motherwort, and lemon balm are some of the, to me, some of the most interesting of the mint family plants, and they are used worldwide. Perhaps your head was swimming when I told you all of the uses for skullcap or all of the uses for catnip, and the same could absolutely be true about motherwort as well. So I like to think about the three parts of a woman's life and how motherwort can be useful during those three parts of a woman's life. And all women begin life as maidens. The maiden is basically from birth until age 15. And her color is white. White because she is not capable of bringing forth new life. Now, 15 to 16 is the normative age at which human females begin menstruating. However, I don't have to tell you that that age is coming back, coming back, coming back. And there's several things that we know about why that age is coming back, um, one of which is quite benign and the others of which we're not quite so sure about. So the most benign thing about the earlier onset of menstruation is the better nourished that the girl is, the earlier she will come to her menstruation. And we are certainly seeing in westernized countries a young women who are incredibly well nourished. And so it should not surprise us that they are coming to their menstruation at 13, 12, 11. But also add to that the fact that the beginning of menstruation and every menstrual cycle itself is a factor of light at night. Most other mammals are day-length ovulators. In other words, when there's a change between the amount of light that is present during the day, that these day-length changes actually trigger estrus, ovulation, in the animal. Not so for humans. Human women are triggered by the amount of light that they are exposed to at night. If this made you suddenly reach for the night light in your little girl's room and turn it off, good impulse. Don't just turn it off. Take it out of there. Exposing little girls to light at night is not a healthy thing. In fact, it may set the stage for later breast cancer because it definitely changes how hormones, important hormones such as melatonin, are made, expressed, and utilized in the brain. We also question whether or not the widespread use of hormones and antibiotics in meat and dairy animals might be contributing to the early onset of menarche. I personally don't think that this is very much of an influence at all. And that is because I know well-nourished little girls on organic farms who've only ever eaten um, organic milk, organic eggs, pasture-raised meat, who nonetheless are coming to their menses at 12 or 13 years old. I also have been doing some reading, some things that have been brought to my attention about uh, marriage practices and childbirth practices in some of the poorest areas of the world in which it is routine for young women to be married off between the ages of 8 and 10 and to step, start having children at or before their first menses, so by the age of 13 or 14 in many of these cases. 
and uh, there we are not certainly not seeing light at night in these very impoverished areas, and we are certainly not seeing that these girls are well nourished. So it may just be a kind of global thing that is happening. And motherwort is useful for young women because our emotions tend to be more stressed when we're maidens than perhaps at any other time in our lives. When we teach our little girls that if they're feeling upset about something, that some motherwort can help them sort through it and feel stronger and find a way toward resolution, then we are not encouraging them to um, use something that will take away what's happening, but instead we encourage them to work with plant allies that actually help them see more deeply into their own behavior and human behavior. And that's exactly the the feeling that I have when I'm using motherwort and the way that I perceive the, the motherwort is that motherwort isn't pulling the wool over my eyes. Motherwort is not a convenient sand bucket where I can bury my head, but motherwort gives me what I need to actually deal with and move through some of the most difficult experiences in my life. And Hey, those teenagers can certainly be very difficult. The mother is age 15 to age 45. And her color is red for the red flow of blood. For women bleed and do not die from their bleeding. In fact, we bring forth new life from our bleeding, not death from our bleeding. Well, we talked about my early apprentice, and her use of catnip um, last week and how wonderful she found it to relieve menstrual cramps. Um, but did I mention that she used catnip every month? So every month she'd say, oh, there's my period. Oh, I have cramps. And she'd go out and she'd get the catnip every month, every month, every month. And I said to you, that's not my ideal herb. Hey, it's great. Catnip relieves menstrual cramping. Excellent, excellent, excellent. But every month, that means it's not really doing much except acting as an antispasmodic. And the truth of the matter is any of these mints are antispasmodics. Sage would relieve menstrual cramps. Rosemary would peppermint with all of the mints. Her antispasmodic catnip does it great. But motherwort does it. And so improves the functioning of the uterus that it's a very rare woman who has to use motherwort for more than five or six months. So what I suggest is that if you're having simple menstrual cramps, that the next time you have those cramps, that you have a bottle of motherwort tincture made from fresh flowering tops of motherwort, and you take two or three drops of that. And then wait five minutes. Have your cramps gone away? Good, that was enough. If they haven't, take two or three more drops. And wait five minutes. Have your cramps gone away now? Okay, that was enough. They haven't, take two or three more drops. And of course, keep track of how many drops you take. When you finally get to the level at which the cramps are gone, then you will know what amount of motherwort tincture you want to start with the next time you're having cramps. And what's fascinating to me about this is that even though you will continue to use that same dose, you don't have to lower the dose, there will be a month in which you suddenly realize there are no cramps at all. We talked at some length last week about mints and are mints actually safe during pregnancy? And I said, yes, in the ways that we are using mints and tinctures of the flowering tops, and in teas, these things are perfectly safe to use during pregnancy. And let me again say that that does not mean that we couldn't turn the mints into something that could cause abortion or could indeed even cause deaths of the baby or the mom. And we'll be talking about pennyroyal, and um, we will talk about pennyroyal in February in our last section on mints. And we'll talk about how women have died from using pennyroyal. And the short answer is they didn't use pennyroyal 
they use pennyroyal oil. In our very first talk, we talked about the difference between volatile oils and essential oils and how essential oils are concentrated enough to be dangerous and that we could possibly actually even die from using essential oils. And this is what has happened with pennyroyal. But in general, motherwort is considered absolutely safe to use during the fertile years, safe to use to relieve cramping, and safe, uh, again, to use to relieve stress, anxiety, fear, and especially, I think, as motherwort is being a wonderful herb for women who are in a difficult relationship. You thought you could change him, but you haven't been able to. Relationship is getting difficult. Motherwort can help you see a clear path through it. You thought he would stop gambling, drinking, or whatever it is that he does to excess, but he hasn't. Motherwort can help you find a way to move forward in your life Probably not with this person who can't seem to stop. It's not an easy decision. It's a very large decision. It's a very difficult decision if there are children involved. And motherwort helps us to be clear. And then we have the crown. From 45 to 105, the culmination of being a woman, the crone whose color is black, for black is everything. The crone knows all parts of a woman's life, maiden, mother, and crone. And of course, to get to crone, we have to go through eek, menopause, and motherwort is such an ally during menopause. As a matter of fact, I tell you, I was so embarrassed. I'm looking at my menopause book and it's about to go to the printer and I suddenly realize, oh, how could I have done this? I've written an entire book and I didn't include another one. Oh, no. Uh, and I had to like actually take something out of the book so I could do a, like a pretty drawing of motherwort and say, motherwort, well, you know, it's the kind of thing that I just use it so much that I forgot it. Right, familiarity. Oh, dear, I hope it isn't breeding contempt. No, it's just kind of forgetfulness, I think. But women tell me that if they take motherwort, just as they're having a hot flash, that it really cools it off. We talked last week about catnip being cooling, and the week before that about skullcap being cooling, too. And motherwort is also considered to be a cooling herb. Again, even though it grows in sunshine, uh, we can certainly see by my strange little patch under my cedar tree that motherwort is happy in the cold and that she keeps a cool head in the hottest of the times. Women who are having really severe hot flashes often find that motherwort is enough to moderate those flashes in intensity, duration, and frequency so that they can move through that situation without having to resort to hormones or stronger things. Motherwort is Leonurus cardiaca. Leo, the lion cardiac, the heart. Motherwort is the lion-hearted herb. The heart and the uterus are, interestingly enough, very similar organs, similar in the structure, similar in how they function, although, needless to say, they do very different things. But motherwort recognizes that similarity. And motherwort is a direct tonic to the uterus, as I've said, so you don't have to keep taking it, keep taking it for menstrual cramps. It actually tonifies the functioning of the uterus, and you just stop having cramps. And it also tonifies the functioning of the heart. And perhaps more importantly, in terms of cardiovascular health, motherwort is angiogenetic for capillaries. Let me break that down into, into normal-sized words. 
angiogenesis. Angio, like an angioplasty, has to do with the blood vessels. And genesis has to do with making new ones. So motherwort has an angiogenetic effect on the capillaries that serve the heart and the uterus. It, again in simple words, it deeply increases the number of capillaries that are bringing blood to and taking blood away from, as well as waste products, away from the heart muscle itself and the uterine muscle itself. Motherwort for the long-lived heart. If you ask someone in Japan, why do you live such a long time, they are not going to say tofu. And they probably wouldn't even say miso, although miso might be on the list. What they are most likely to say is a fermented beverage made from motherwort. And it is considered the herb of longevity. They say the children of those who drink motherwort have no inheritance. And, of course, that's rather like the bumper sticker that you see in Southern California. And it says, spend it all, damn the kids. <laughs> rather a more gross American way of putting it than the more gentle Japanese way, which is your parents are just going to live so long, there won't be a thing left for you. And besides which, as many of us are finding out, it's really different. If you're in your 50s or 60s when your parents die, that inheritance that they might give to you uh, probably isn't going to shift your life that much as if it happened earlier. And since we're all living longer, that indeed is happening as well. My um, dear friend Edith elected to die at home of her breast cancer. And she and I explored many of these wonderful mints. She was the one who went out and harvested the skull cap with me and then drove to her home. And at her graveside, her husband, uh, who was 20 years older than her, uh, turned to me and said, you know, if Edith hadn't put me on motherwort danger, it would probably be you and her kicking dirt on me instead of the other way around. He had already had two heart attacks at the point at which Edith said, you are taking motherwort, you are taking a dropper full of motherwort at least twice a day and better three times a day. For women especially, because it is not the large blood vessels in women's cardiovascular system that tend to get plaque in them, it is the smaller ones. And motherwort really promotes the growth of those small capillaries. This does bring us to one caveat, one warning about motherwort, however, and that is if you have a gynecological or uterine condition that causes severe or heavy flooding, bleeding, or hemorrhaging. Don't use motherwort on a regular basis. You could still use motherwort for menstrual cramps. You know, you're dealing with menstrual cramps. You can take some motherwort. That's not the problem. But don't use motherwort every day. Don't use it as a heart tonic because that will cause such copious growth of capillaries to the uterus that when you bleed, you are going to bleed. And that can be enormously scary. I can't end my discussion about motherwort without sharing, to me, this very priceless thing. Each apprentice is assigned the task of choosing a green ally and breathing with and working with that green ally for the extent of her apprenticeship. And sometimes the apprentices will choose a plant they know the name of and sometimes they will choose a plant they don't know the name of. An apprentice came to me and said, well, I've chosen this plant here, and she pointed at another one, but I don't know what the name of it is. What is the name of it? Oh, well, they're not allowed to look in books. This has to be them and the plant, not what books tell them. And I said to her, well, I could tell you what the name of that plant is, but wouldn't it be more interesting for you if you asked the plant what its name was? And she looked at me. I wasn't 
sure if she thought I was teasing her or joking her, but she could tell that I looked pretty serious. And she said, okay. And a few days later, we were standing in that area again of the garden. And she said, well, the plant told me what to call it. I said, oh, what should you call it? And she said, it said to that it should be called hands from the heart. And if ever there was a plant whose hands are stretching out heart to heart to heal our hearts, to heal our anxiety, to heal our menstrual cramps, certainly it is our beloved motherwort, Leonurus cardiaca. Thank you, listeners, for being with me here at Time Monk Radio. I so appreciate you, and I especially appreciate the fact that you are helping me to reclaim herbal medicine as people's medicine. It's the medicine that grows right outside your door. Good night, Gemini. Thank you, Susan. This concludes part 11 of our 20-part series, Marvelous Mints, The Wise Woman Way, with Susan Reed at Time Muck Radio.